Uh, thank you for joining us at our first Thursdays at the Table discussion, uh, what gardens teach us here at Robert F. Kennedy campus, part of the Lunch Lady Courage Creative Seeds. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking with Mud Baron from uh, Mir Ranch, Sandra Luna from the Crenshaw High School Garden, and Laura Botsong from Enrich LA. So uh, why don't we just start off and have you guys introduce yourselves and tell us a little about what you do, how you got started, and about your programs. Um, do you want to start talking? All yeah. right. Oh, Hello. sure. Yeah, definitely. So <laughs> I'm, uh, I've been volunteering for probably five months now with Enrich LA. So we're an organization that builds um, gardens, edible gardens in public schools all around LA. Um, and we built, uh, this Saturday we're going to be building our 51st garden. Um, and we've been around for less than two years, so we're really out there building, getting it done. Um, and I've been, I actually have been teaching um, garden programming at um, RFK right here um, since uh, this December. And we planted in December and we've had a great harvest, lots of lettuce. Um, and the kids have been able to take um, vegetables home and have really enjoyed it. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And Sandra? Yeah. All right. Hello. My name is Sandra Luna, and um, I work at Crenshaw High School. Um, I'm a teacher there. I have seven classes, and I've been gardening. I got connected to um, gardening through Master Gardeners program, and that's how I was introduced to the magic world of gardening. Um, I have been involved in developing our program at our school, which has been really tough. But we're managing, this is my third year there, and so we're, we're harvesting. We just had our spring harvest, so I'm excited today. Um, and we're working our way through to make it, um, making it a successful garden. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool, you're cool, my buddy. Uh, I'm live tweeting <laughs> my talk while I'm Twittering. And uh, I'm Mud Baron. Here we go, I'm gonna hit the send button. Love Vine, you guys love Vine? Love Vine, I know. so good. Uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, the ADD kid teaches uh, farming, your ranch, Mud Baron, uh, your ranch, Pasadena High School, uh, one of uh, five high schools, 98% uh, student of uh, color, 90% free and reduced lunch, um, a third of the kids on probation, a third of the kids are in group homes, um, a third of the kids are absolutely brilliant, and, and then sometimes they end up in my class. And um, I discovered uh, teaching gardening is the coolest work ever done, right? Mm -hmm. um, child slave labor rocks. <laughs> um, and uh, the kids are given half uh, the chance to do amazing things. I think you guys all agree. Like they just, you know, uh, today my kids made, uh, they picked, they stole our Swiss chard from our customers in our CSA. Then they put uh, Japanese mustard greens, because got it got the bougie kind, and garlic and uh, made stir fry for each other. Mm -hmm. so plus they went beyond their own nose and they made it for 50 of our CSA customers so we could sample it. Because our CSA, our vegetable subscription program, we've been pushing Swiss chard out on people for the past 50 months, and you gotta change it up, right, Sandra Luna? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what is it about gardens and schools that that relationship, what is that like, and why do you think it's, it's beneficial? Yeah, I mean, um, going into a high school environment, I, I found that the kids were um, really interested in learning about plant bio, because they, they actually um, have kind of cut that out of some high school curriculum and focus a lot more on genetics and a lot more on microbiology. And so going out and kind of seeing plants, and I've done some plant anatomy um, stuff, you know, some, and just, you know, also cooking. Everyone likes food. so um, so. They can kind of expand their science curriculum, you know, be out and be touching, you know, um, exploring. Um, it's like an outdoor classroom. You, you know, you can really use it in that way. Um, and also tying it into, you know, this is where your food comes from. This is how you prepare all these crazy foods that, that, we're, that we're growing, like the kohlrabi that's um, sprouting up right now looks like, they look like spaceships. They have this big purple like stem and then these, all these um, leaves, you know, growing off of it and kids are like, wow, how do, how do I cook that, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel that um, just the, yeah, the whole world of plant bio, healthy eating, um, kids do uh, get engaged by that, so. I think for me it's been really beautiful to see the connection between what the students are doing in my class and they're starting to do at home. Um, and also a lot of the kids in my classroom already have parents who are doing this at home. 
um, and it's not just um, something that's limited here. They have mm. farms in the south. They have farms all over, and so in Mexico, Central America. So for me, it's been really beautiful to see that connection, and to also see how students are not just learning in class, but they're taking it out into their homes. Um, I have students who have even started their own small businesses as a result of my class, and so for me, that's really inspiring to see that it's not just staying in my classroom, but it's spreading. So I feel like my little seeds are spreading now, and I feel like I'm doing my job finally. It's like it's coming full circle, um, and I love to see that they're not only growing um, through the science that they're learning, through the math that they're learning, but they're also learning to socialize and to really be amongst each other, which is something that is not really um, possible in, in a high school setting a lot of times because everybody goes into their little cliques. But in my class, everybody's there. They throw me everybody. They give me the kids that nobody wants. They give me the really smart kids that are in the magnet program. They give me everybody. So for me, it's a really beautiful thing to see all those interactions, and I'm really, really happy to see that. The other thing I really find that's really powerful is that they're getting it. They're understanding that it's not just like, oh, we're eating this junk food now. Wait, why are they doing that to us? Like, that's really important, you know, for kids to understand that. And they're making much better food choices for themselves and for their families. Because I have a lot of kids with diabetes already. And they're in high school. And so that's really scary. And in their families. So they're trying. So to see those changes is really inspiring. And I'm really, really happy that, you know, just a little bit that I'm giving them, they're doing something really positive with it. So I'm excited about that. So you're in the classroom, right? You mm -hmm. Teach uh, as well. So what day time did your day start? Oh, I have to be seven forty-five. You're right. Uh, yeah, seven thirty. So it's ten o'clock p.m. So whoa, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's it's a fun little surreal Dada-esque uh, yeah. panel. No, and, and, and so it shouldn't surprise you when I say you know the fraud of uh, school gardens, right? Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you got kids, you know, with their little businesses. It's not your students selling Flaming Hot Cheetos yeah. to the other garden kids? Is it that business? They do that they too. They do that too, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that happens. Oh my God, you know what my kids did the other, the other week? Actually, uh, I wasn't gonna talk about this, but why, why not? So so the kids, um, I've got a huge number of kids in group homes and uh, you know they need structure, they need something positive, they need something that's their own, right? So I you know hand over our, our CSA, which is our vegetable subscription program, which is a jobs program. Uh, hand over the Santa Monica Farmers Market produce leftovers after where our customers get their shares. And you know, a slightly bruised avocado still tastes really good. And it's mm -hmm. organic and it's all bougie, whatever. So they make the organic guacamole with the Santa Monica Farmers Market produce. But you know what they use for chips? <laughs> hot Cheetos. Uh, yeah, the flaming hot Cheetos. So just like, yeah, so you know that space of where the school garden and my work is, it's a little bit between the sublime and the profane. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, that's that's the world we inhabit. And you know, maybe because it is, you know, hour 15 or whatever, my working day. Um, the fraud of school gardens, like it's really, it's really not about that. Avocados or, uh, in my case, I'm a, a flower grower, uh, dahlias, National Flower of Mexico. Uh, um, it's it's about the kids themselves and, and, and they're broken and the schools generally we're sitting in a, a LA Unified building which you know is part of a uh, what was this a billion dollar school right um, yeah. and you know this space is a, is a palace to concrete um, which you know is a lesson I suppose in uh, static and things not changing but uh, given you know uh, some seeds in the Sun and the rain and patience which is a hard lesson, and you can't standardize test patients. Um, given those opportunities to create something amazing, you know, the kids, they rock, they really do. And, and, the, and the framework of it, it's not like any other subject, because um, if you put a math test, um, you know, or a bubble test in the ground, you know, you, the worms might not even eat it, it could be toxic. <laughs> um, but you get, you know, this stuff, oh look, I have props. I have enough for everybody, the whole audience. <laughs> um, you put this stuff in the ground and you get, you know, the squash ravioli, right? You want, you want the squash ravioli? Party time. <laughs> I teach ninja arts too, it's good. <laughs> so could you uh, kind of walk us through a day for you and, and for, for your students? Like what do they do in the gardens? Yeah, um, so I teach a uh, 
an actual class, an etymology class, um, and so they come out and are able to actually see real bugs. It's like the garden is just full of them, and it's so funny because they'll all squeal and run away when they see a bug. And I'm like, really? You chose the elective etymology. You didn't, or um, you didn't look that up, did you? Um, and so, <laughs> like, they're like, okay, uh, you know, it's like, look, guys, an aphid, and they're just like, oh my god, no. Um, so. They kind of, so that class, you know, I'm out um, and kind of have this set group of kids, but my after school um, class is a lot longer, it's an hour and a half, so we kind of get to do a little more in-depth stuff, but I, um, I usually have a, a lesson that I teach, so I'll, um, I've done a lesson about that tied together, I made an organic pesticide with, um, I blended up an onion and a head of garlic and a tablespoon of cayenne pepper and some dish soap and water and we sprayed it on the plants and everyone was like, ooh, stinky. And then we did um, a lesson about plant defenses. So I kind of try to get the, get the kids out, you know, um, weeding, working with, um, yeah, kind of uh, getting their hands dirty. Um, and also learning some, a little something about, about plant bio that they could use in their, um, in their own if they want to start a garden. Um, and then I always bring a healthy snack, so they always think it's it looks weird, um, and, but they usually like it. So I put all the recipes up on a blog, um, on the Rich LA blog actually, and uh, and they all are like, give us the recipes because we love them. So some of the favorites where I made grapefruit avocado salsa um, for for winter, and they were just like, whoa, this is so good. How how can grapefruit go with avocado? Um, and uh, I bet it's good knows? with flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> I know, right? That's what was happening. It was terrible. It was terrible. Um, oh, and balsamic asparagus. They were all just like, "What is that? It looks like an alien asparagus." You know. Um, so, anyway, so that's usually uh, the outline of, of yeah, a day in my with my kids here. At RFK. Seven classes, so I have a full day. Um, so I have. Let's see, I have minimum about 40 kids per class, so I'm really tied up. <laughs> um, so we usually, I have a curriculum that I have to follow. My class is a landscaping class, so I have to follow a curriculum, which is really great and really helpful. So they're, um, so they're not thinking that it's just a class that you come and play in the dirt, but there's also some learning that's being involved, which is really beautiful for me because um, at the start, they think that they're not going to be doing any classwork. They think that it's just coming in and they're going to hang out in the garden, but that's not what happens. They have to work. Um, they also earn community service hours for my class, so um, it really helps that I'm able to convince them to do the work outside because I'm like, hey, no, you're earning something from this, like put some love into this place. And um, it's really nice because I get to take them out every day. That's my, my lab. And so we have a 2.5 acre garden, which is really, really great. And so we're able to use that space wisely, finally. Um, and so they're busy. We do everything. We have an orchard, we have vegetables, we have herbs. So they're constantly learning about everything. It's very hands-on. Um, we try everything. So today we had loquats. We were eating loquats. Um, we did the harvest, so they were trying the cilantro the rosemary, um, the parsley. So it was really nice because some of the kids are always like, kind of like, ew, I don't want to try that, it looks nasty. You're gonna try that, miss? I'm like, yeah, look, watch, you know? We tried flowers today, edible flowers. Like, and they were excited too. Some of them are like, I would never eat that stuff. But it's really nice to bring in the classwork and combine it with like real hands-on because as they're doing it they don't even get that they're actually really learning this and they're able to share this when they go outside because I see the kids sharing because they'll take out like so today some of them um, took some of the stuff that we harvested so they're walking out with their bags and they're like you can see the friends like what do you have in there what do you have in there and the kids are like oh we got this from the garden I'm gonna take it home I was like yes they're gonna go share it um, we also have this tree I'm not even sure how you say this in English it's called Hokotes, um, where I'm from. And so we discovered them in our garden um, and we've been eating them, which has been really great. And things that they would never think of at home, you know, it's just, it's really great. I'm really, really lucky to have this job. And I get to spend a lot of time with these kids and really, you know, um, mentor them and encourage them. And not only show them that gardening is just in the garden, but there's there's other careers that are still connected to this type of work. So I really always want to encourage that in my students. So that's really what I try to do with them every day. 
<laughs> so I only have five classes, but we're both on block schedules. And for those of you who don't know what a block schedule is, it's like it's really good for project-based learning. Yeah. So it's hour, 40 minutes. So you have minimal complaint time in the beginning on setup, <laughs> minimal complaint time on cleanup, and you get a lot of work. And uh, this is one of the most essential tools in a garden. My kids were tripping out the other day. They're like, oh my God, Mr. Mudd's listening to Dubstep the Whittler while I was working. <laughs> and they don't like it when Dave's going to listen to Metallica because I'm like, I'm weak. <laughs> we you. <laughs> so uh, we are, I, I, I call your ranch, which is uh, just about a mile north of the Rose Bowl in uh, what is classically defined as a food desert, an area where uh, it's easier to find uh, the Flaming Hot Cheetos at any given uh, convenience store than the uh, balsamic asparagus, right? Yeah. Except for that little pocket that is my ranch because it's two acres and we're a working farm, which um, we've actually figured out a way to make uh, school gardens an economic engine because most of them are cute and it's great to have little people, Rosa, sitting out there with their farm to preschool four-year-olds with their little watering cans living out Radiohead little sad green water can, plastic water can songs. But the kids, when we started the program a year and a half ago, they, I asked them what they wanted and they didn't say they wanted organic, Hale's best jumbo muskmelon. Thank you, see the change. Um, they didn't say they wanted all the dahlias that I did. They said they wanted jobs. Because as they, as they tell me now, you know, they're like, Mr. Mudd, being a teenager is expensive. And so they want cell phones and they want headphones and they, you know, they want things that other kids at a non-poverty school uh, have and, and cars and all that, you know, like things that are growing up. The teen unemployment rate, I don't know what it is at Crenshaw, but at Muir, it's, it's above 90%. I mean, I do have my seniors, they do eventually get jobs at Jack in the Box, right? So um, our model which defines our Thursdays, because uh, it's our uh, Community Supported Agriculture uh, Vegetable Box Distribution Day, is we get the pickup uh, delivery from the Santa Monica Farmers Market Wednesdays. Uh, we've got our own harvest. Right now we're putting about a third of the box together, so we're really good for Swiss chard. You saw the Swiss chard, right? Uh, and then we've, we're really good right now. Broccoli's good. Um, our collards are good. Our uh, Japanese uh, mustard greens that our customers, even the bougie ones, don't know how to use. Um, that's why the kids were cooking it earlier. Um, and specifically, our special needs kids put the boxes together. And and actually, Erica, our CSA manager, who's 23, it's her favorite part of the of the week when the boxes get put together. And today, I told him the joke. I'm going to try it. Try it on you. You ready for it? Okay. So so if a gardener married a DJ, what would their name be? I don't know. Let us turn up the beat. I like that. I saw the shit. Yeah. Yeah, and so all the kids who, who range, especially these kids, range from mildly autistic to severely profoundly uh, handicapped, they're all like, let us turn up the beat. <laughs> As you're busting. And we're busting out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, a little, yeah, exactly. Um, actually, crazy marker face. See ya today during, during crazy marker face, you know. Uh, so the, the thing is that we, we're right now, we're spending about six or $7,000 per month on buying produce to fill up our CSA because we're an aggregator. I discovered in Fresno at the Small Farm Conference, which we're an actually certified farm at Muir. We can, we've got like paperwork and county seals and adult stuff oh my god um, and so as as a business the kids have to they have to do payroll they have to fire each other because there's only so much payroll to go around based on revenue like a business and we do get grants Whole Foods was cool enough uh, I think for anyone listening and, and wanting to know how to fund a school garden uh, I'm the former research person for all school gardens um, Whole Foods is a great uh, easy get it's a two thousand dollar grant just do the paperwork and most of the uh, schools that apply, because school garden's expensive, right? Mm -hmm. um, being a pimp ain't easy, is it, Sandra? <laughs> Not so much. So the, the challenges of, of funding them are, are just that. So our social enterprise model with the CSA, we have 200 customers that pay a minimum of 15 to $25 a week. And I'm really proud of the fact that we got a grant to uh, support 50 low-income families at five uh, schools, which aren't hard to find in Pasadena where the economic requirements are such. So schools at Jackson, at Cleveland, they come, they pick up, their caseworkers pick up their boxes, and we distribute free CSAs to those schools. Um, because the conversation, you know, any given kid, and, and Lunch Lady Courage, I brought you flowers for after show. Um, you know, all kids need to have a conversation with a summer cucumber, I think, right? Or awesome, right? From the Hopi Reservation, tepary beans, right? This shouldn't just be something that's like West Side or Arroyo Pasadena. 
And so my kids, you know, one of the hardest dilemmas, and I'm being indulgent with the time, but uh, one of the hard dilemmas they have after they come in from the field and they, you know, pick the Swiss chard and they uh, uh, harvest the broccoli is, and this is hard, you ready for it? Okay, so they have to pick between blood oranges and organic Fuji apples. What do they eat? And man, do they take some time figuring that out. <laughs> Good blood orange, I think. You're kind of touching on it. Um, you talk about food deserts, uh, you know, your schedules that you have, uh, Flaming Hot Cheetos. What would you say is the biggest challenge that you face in the work that you do? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest challenge for me um, would be keeping the kids interested and having them bring some of what I'm saying you know, have that get into their, into, into their brain and kind of, how can I apply this to my life? Um, and I think, I mean, I see that very clearly with kind of just the, the food aspect of it. Like, they're all very drawn in, especially from my after school program where I kind of have to work at keeping kids, like, coming after school, doing a garden program rather than something else um, after school, like playing sports or, I don't know. Um, and so, uh, you know, they, they're they there eating, you know, hot Cheetos, <laughs> you know, um, you know, candy, what they got out of the vending machine, and then it's like, oh, there's a snack, you know, I, you know, I, I harvested kale from the garden, made a kale dip, and they're like, ew, it looks like someone threw that up, like, oh, you know, but then they all try it, and they're like, hey, wait, like, I'm gonna kind of make a fuss about this, but that wasn't all that bad, and I feel like that, especially kind of um, sharing that experience with with other kids and kids that they eat with every day, it's um, it's it's it makes an impact. And I mean, some of the kids have told me, you know, hey, can I have this recipe? My dad has diabetes. I want to make this for him. Um, can I bring the rest of this home? I mean, I made this huge salad, and we had all this salad left over. And it was like, yeah, sure, bring it home. Like, have your family try it. Um, and and so it's kind of making that connection. Um, as well as I, uh, a lot of my kids in the, um, are seniors, and so I was trying to tie in some of the like kind of lab elements that I came across um, in my undergrad doing bio, kind of tell them like, hey, you know, you might come across something like this, like how to do plant identification or um, or keying out plants or um, different things like that. You might run across that in college, so apply, go, you know. Um, because not all of them are super motivated. So yeah, the motivation is hard, definitely. I think for me the biggest challenge has been um, dealing with administration. We have constantly changes in our school. Every year I've worked there, I've had a new principal. So I've had to start every time, every year. That's been really, really difficult. Um, and having to convince them how important the program is and to get their support, that's been really tough because um, it's starting all over every year. Um, also, getting my keys taken away to continually stay in the garden over the summer, like they've taken away my keys. So it's really difficult because all the work that we've put into it, all our hard work, <laughs> our love is goes to waste because over the summer they, they take away my keys. And so it's really, really disheartening and really tough to have the kids put so much time and effort and then they know that at the end of the, the year it's probably going to go to waste. And like they're already asking me, so what's gonna happen, Miss, this summer? I'm just like, I don't know. We don't know what's gonna happen because again, um, we're having um, our school's been taken over, so it's gonna be a magnet next year, and so we've all had to reapply for our positions, and so we don't know if our program's gonna stay. So it might all just go to waste all our work again. So that's been really, really, really tough because you put so much love into it, and it's really hard to see it just kind of come back and then there's like all these giant weeds again. You're like, oh, we, we have put so much effort into this and we've got to start all over. So that's for me the most challenging part. <laughs> it's not <all> great. <laughs> yeah. Although my stoner kids tried getting my beehives high. I said, guys, that's not the kind of smoker I was talking about. But they, you know what, we can fix that. We can deal with that. I just did say that, right? It is getting late, so the George uh, Nori uh, challenge, right, to answer your question. Um, and, and kids knocking over beehives. I mean, there's, some, there's other issues. It's not about beehives at that point, right? 
Um, but the adults definitely are, are the biggest challenges because I think I've been fired by Alien Unified more than you have. Mm. And you just like, it's a ritual. It's not like, oh, I'm doing the right thing. I got fired again. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's a weird time to be in teaching. It's, it's a challenge. Mm. And uh, for me, I'm a retired contractor. So I look at a space like this and I go, oh, look at that joinery. Nice. Um, oh, that <laughs> hack made that little piece. Um, but teaching kids, uh, you know, how to have a conversation with food and butterflies and ladybugs and uh, the coolest work I've ever done. I accidentally happened into it. I used to build, you know, quarter million dollar uh, kitchens for people that weren't nice. And now, you know, the work that we do with the plant giveaways and the 200 schools that were at uh, near last weekend, the coolest people in the world, like enabling gardens to happen all over LA, much better work. But on a very specific level, because we're sitting here at LA Unified uh, and under the, the belly of the beast, you know, the story came out last month when I was the policy deputy of the, the, the school board that I was dealing with. You know, they, they found $158 million in LA Unified school lunch budget mm -hmm. that wasn't feeding kids. So when you, you've got a lovely place to put on it, Miss Lunch Lady Courage, but it's really the, the story is uh, the, the food service directors and the board members who are candidates who take campaign checks and the staffers, the uh, folks who have the responsibility to do better by kids and they make the decisions and end up surprisingly after their years of dedicated hard service uh, after Beaudry working for the very same vendors that were basically lowballing the kids all these years. And as I can quote, the, I don't often quote the superintendent of the state of California's uh, deputy often, but you know, I think his name is Ziegler. He said they're literally stealing food out of the mouths of kids. And so when it comes to school gardens and school lunch, I mean, you have to you know, go back and, and watch uh, you know, all the president's men you know, follow the money. And so this, the school lunch uh, budget in, in LA Unified, half a billion dollars a year. Uh, the school garden budget, non-existent, although that's something that's a constant good news media story. It's a warm, fuzzy image, kind of like, you know, Reagan with uh, senior citizens. And back in the 80s, he would do this. And, you know, the next day you would see that he, after smiling with them, the next day the budget was cut by 30% for senior programs. So the, the, the visual and the reality, there's a disconnect. And uh, you know, I think the city collectively of Los Angeles, and I'll say the same much of Pasadena, has a, a collective uh, low degree of self-esteem that they accept the inadequacy year after year after year. $158 million, it was in the LA Times, was taken from school lunch. And unless mm -hmm. uh, there, you know, Jules Verne is now writing the LA Unified school menus with a time machine and going back and feeding these kids, you know, I mean, they've, they've they've been robbed from and um, companies like Gold Star you know names not changed to protect the uh, guilty um, you know they profit off off of what you know lunch ladies have the yeah they, they, they do have the challenges of scale and all of this but that's what our job is to take care of these kids it doesn't matter in, you know no one school takes care of all of them so you know we take care of the one kid that we're dealing with um, the one kid who needs the intervention the one kid um, who is there in front of you and you know even if he stole the have you had this happen where the kids steal each other's shoes during the change out um, oh yeah my kids steal each other's shoes and um, yeah you can get distracted real easily being a teacher and it's hard it's hard to work on this big big picture stuff when you've got um, you know the challenges of being a teacher in an inner city low income school but that doesn't mean we don't take the time to deal with them so you know Eric Garcetti, Wendy Gruel, you know, they're running for mayor. Let's see what they have to say about it. Um, I know Eric and Wendy personally, and Amy, Eric's wife, you know, she and I once had a conversation. Their kids was at a charter school not so uh, long ago. They had adopted uh, for a minute or fostered. I it was foster. And Amy was telling me that, you know, oh, for, for nutrition, the kids have this pastry. And they had adopted two kids, 13, 10, I think, brother, sister, with emotional problems, and one was on the heavy side. And so, nutrition period. It's like this pastry, sugar, death, sugar bomb that every teacher has to deal with afterwards. And then lunch, mm -hmm. right? So the kids go right for the waffle fries, and uh, the rest of it goes in the trash can. And then the after-school program, the goddamn after-school programs, because they want participation. You know, I'm not saying you guys have the same logic, but there's a lot of brownies involved. 
<laughs> and so not only are, you know, to, to the disservice of the kids right there every day, is that in order, you know, to get the engagement and the participation, the schools participate in the lowest common denominator of palette. And, you know, I'm not asking for cordon blue. I'm not asking every kid to have, even though I think they deserve it, Swiss chard, uh, Japanese mustard green, and garlic stir fry. Mm, good. Um, but man, seriously, funnel cakes, blue slushies, <laughs> is Chamba juice an answer? You know, handing it over to some corporate vendor? How's that for a yeah. challenge? That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Debbie Downer has challenges. That's <laughs> no, good. Okay. Um, we, uh, we're close to time, so just we'll all ask this last question. But just kind of, um, when a student comes in at the beginning of the year to your program, and then the end of the year, what differences do you see in them? Yeah, I mean, the first time I came in, the kids were kind of skeptical and didn't want to pay attention. <laughs> um, and we're like, what's this garden thing? And they had to pull out weeds because um, the garden kind of got overrun before I went in to kind of uh, start up a gardening program. Um, and then, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, we're wrapping up the, the spring harvest right now. And I mean, you know, they were all there on time sit down, you know, are engaged, um, listen to what I have to say, there's like a little more respect or something uh, that has kind of come about and I mean, and like I said for my after school kids, it's like they're still there, you know, they, um, on a minimum day, they decide to come out and do the garden, you know, instead of just um, heading home early. Uh, and um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a yeah, a, a respect thing and also a concern with, you know, how the garden's doing. They they go in and they're checking on it and they're watering it um, and they're kind of taking responsibility for it and are like, hey, wait, I, I can do this. You know, that's kind of what we're, what I'm, you know, going for is, is yeah, you can do this because people get intimidated by gardening and it's not, um, it's not rocket science <laughs> most of the time, you know, you just got to get out there and do it. So. Uh, yeah, that's what I, the kids hopefully go away encouraged and empowered to garden. Um, when my kids start, a lot of them were forced to come into my class, so they're not very happy at the start. Um, but then you start to see all these really nice changes and they start to really begin to appreciate once they start to eat the food because they're seeing that, oh, this is coming from this place. I want to be here more. So they even want to come during lunch and during break. And sometimes I'm like, this is Miss Luna's break. Can she just get like five minutes, please? Um, but it's really beautiful to see all this transformation that I see with the kids where at first they hated it. They didn't want to participate. They would just like sit in the corner all upset. And then towards like, we slowly move, they start to take ownership and they want to do the things. And then they start to teach others. So when I get new students throughout the year, other students will start to be like, hey, hey, uh, no, that's not the way you do it. You know, they'll start holding each other accountable. Um, and they also see that they start to take more um, ownership because at the beginning they're like, oh, that's Miss Luna's garden. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's not Miss Luna's garden, it's your garden. It's the school's garden, it's all of our garden. It's not my garden. I help take care of it, I help run it, but it's not my garden. I never want to take ownership of just that. It's all your work because it would not be what it is if it wasn't for their work. So I see major transformations with a lot of kids, um, especially those that um, come in very just kind of negative and just don't want to do it. Those are the ones that I have um, really proud of because sometimes those are the kids that are like really hard and difficult. They probably come from, you know, they live in foster homes, so they just are really troubled lives. And so coming to the garden becomes also a really safe haven for them. And so I'm really, really happy to see those results at the end. And I hope to do that. <laughs> This has been good. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I like you too, you girl. You're cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. Gardner's <laughs> nice. Gardner's cool. Yeah. So, so I'm a retired contractor. So I run I run my project uh, like a job site, except you know with a little pedagogy thrown in, Highlander Center type stuff, that community organizer. 
Um, so I negotiate with the kids. Like, what, what's your job? What's your job? What's your job? So, you know, there's Manny and Cecilia uh, mulching the last week's flower bulbs. Uh, there's uh, uh, Evan and Giselle. They're, they're planting bulbs. And then Yasmin's behind them, you know, cleaning up, making sure everything gets taken care of and all the tools put away. They negotiate. We, we agree, and they do. Um, the, the really awesome thing that I like to do is give kids opportunities to engage with folks because the garden itself at Mirror, and you're all invited, it's just right off of Lincoln uh, in Pasadena, up, up just north of the 210 freeway, 1905 Lincoln Avenue. Um, it's really decadent and bougie with the St. Gabriel's in the background and the artichokes. And it's been there a year and a half, but you bend over, you pick stuff up. So one of our adult volunteers, the Pasadena uh, Garden Club, and it's not the women's garden club, even though they're all women. And I told them, I'm a big woman, I can join too. Like, no. No, but so, <laughs> Lily, who, who I adore, she's great. At one point she was on the, uh, she was the chair of the board at the uh, LA uh, Regional Food Bank that, mm. that brought in the South Central Farm, right? Mm -hmm. So she's, she's there with the kids. And they were doing a bulb planting project a couple weeks back. And uh, they were there, Alondra, uh, one of my kids who has physical Tourette's, Giselle, the, the freshman from gym, who's not even wanting to be in gym, she's in the garden every day working. And um, I, I shot this really great little Vine video, right? You love the Vine? Yeah. And uh, you know, there's this moment where I see Alondra and Lily, like they're really having this amazing conversation. So I talk to Lily afterwards, and I go, Alondra, the, the student, um, I go, you know, she really, uh, you know, liked working with you, it was great. And we're trying to get scholarships and mentorship opportunities because the program itself exists as a social uh, enterprise. And I want my kids to have opportunities. I want them to get uh, that little scholarship that may, like, like okay, I'm going to try PCC. And for the guys, they realize the girls are cute and so they might stay. Um, but, you know, but for the girls, their parents are more likely to have been in prison and college. And they just, they're just so amazing kids. So every opportunity. So I'm telling Lily who uh, is a retired Goldman Sachs investment bank banker, I go, you know, Alana's really done amazing things, and I think you really, you guys really should work together more. And she goes, oh, really? I go, yeah, the thing about Alana, though, is that she started off the year with um, an ankle bracelet. And Lily goes, oh, my gosh, I have an ankle bracelet, too, and lifts up her pant leg and shows me this sterling silver charmy thing. And I go, <laughs> the county doesn't do the charms. And so... There's that space where there's this transition, where there's kids that have need that are working really hard to get past, uh, to, to get out of their own way. And then adults who can help and mentor. And so, so to, to facilitate those introductions and let the kids be really excellent. Um, yeah. That's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us and for all the work that you do. Um, you can find information for them on their Facebooks, Laura Botsong from Rich LA, yep. Sandra Luna at the Crenshaw High School Garden, and Mud Baron at Mir <laughs> Ranch. Coco Zochi! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.